Hey everybody and welcome back to another Kraken Packs video. I am your host, Mr. Bevers. We're back again with box number three of Corset 2020. Let's get right into it. Crack it open. Get this little knife here. Cut that bad boy open like so. Rip this open. And let's get started. Boom. Packs out of box because it just makes it easier for us. If we take them out, boom, put them over here like this, all off to the side. Let's make sure they're still in shot, just enough so that you guys can see them, so that you know how many we got left. I don't believe we're looking for any commons or uncommons of note, except for possibly the, uh, let's see, commons, holy what? Oh, these must be from... Okay, hold on. Yeah, these are not from... These are from the... Ugh, this is the worst. So, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff worth a few dollars in the common slot, but it's all stuff from the... Uh, like the Welcome decks and from the Planeswalker decks. I don't think there's actually any commons... That are worth over a dollar. Like. Yeah, I don't think any of these commons are over a dollar. Oh, man, I hate it when they do that. Yeah, again, this is not in there. That's not in there. Okay. Veil of Summer. This is seeing uh, a bunch of hype around it. So there is a Veil of Summer uncommon and Risen Reef. Those are the two uncommons that we need to keep an eye out for. Okay. Captivating Gyre, Dragon Mage, and Leyline of Sanctity. Nice way to start. Tokens, lands. Tokens and lands are always good. What do we got? <clears throat> Creeping Trailblazer. Apostles of Purifying Light, hard, uh, hard Cover, and Gargos Vicious Watcher. Spirit Token and Basic Land. Cryptic Caves, Howling Giant, Scuttlemutt, and Tails End. Tails End. Let's hope it's not the the end of our tale of unboxing Core 2020. Uncaged Fury, Scampering Scorcher, Aether Gust, and a Rotting Regisaur with a Sweet Wolf Token and a Swift Water Cliffs. Huh. Ah, open. What you got? What you got? Fencing Ace, Gruesome Scourger, Overgrowth Elemental, and Wake Root Elemental. Little five five or six. Ooh, foil island. Man, that's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I love foil lands. One of my favorite things. It's probably 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 my favorite my most favorite foil is is lands. And just basics. Basic foil lands. Chef kiss, as they say. Master splicer. Noxious grasp. Overcome and Temple of Triumph. Soldier token and a Blossoming Sands. So the last box we opened, I think we only got one of the Scrylands, right? If I'm not mistaken. Uh, Wolf Rider Saddle, Rule of Law, Molder Irvine Reclamation, and Masterful Replication. A Johnny's Pride Mate token. And a Mountain. A Mountang, if you will. School Scholar of the Ages, Flame Sweep, Retributive Wand, and Glint Horn Buccaneer. 
with a foil wolfkin bond and a spirit token with a dismal black lock. So again, uh, the foil counts definitely go higher um, in these packs. According to the note on the back of the pack, they increased it. Um, but we're ha we're almost a third of the way through this box, and we've only seen two, which is not a high amount. Howling Giant, Karulian Drake, Diamond Knight, and our first mythic is Kethis, uh, the Hidden Hand. Interesting little card. Um, I'm, ex I'm, I'm interested to see what some people are trying to do with that card, with the builds, because it makes your other legendaries... Like, I feel like it would be okay... Like, it's not necessarily bad in Commander because you could have just a whole bunch of legendary creatures in your deck um, and legendary enchantments and things and stuff like that. Eternal Isolation, Vampire of the Dire Moon, Ancestral Blade, and Hanged Executioner. Now, that being said, I think I've also seen it being played in Standard. Yeah, I've seen it played in Standard uh, because someone was playing, like, the um, all of the legendary stuff from, like, Dominaria. Um It'll rotate out soon, but they were playing, like, the um, the Primeval's Rebirth and all that stuff to, like, bring all the dudes back, which is kind of cool. Gruesome Scourger, Bloodthirsty Aerialist, Season of Growth, and Scheming Symmetry. Scheming Symmetry with a Dismal Blackwater and a Johnny's Pride Mate token. Good old Johnny's Pride Mate token. Portal of Sanctuary. Grave Digger. Mask of Immolation, and Voracious Hydra with a Plains and an Elemental token. All right, we are now a third of the way through the box. Let's see what else. Air Elemental, Unchained Berserker, Diviner's Lockbox, and Temple of Mystery. Ooh, it's just so mysterious. It is the most mysterious thing I've seen. Loyal Pegasus, Disfigure, Devote, Decree, and Steel Overseer. Solid card. Steel Overseer, very nice. Um, was it was quite a bit more expensive than it is now that it's been reprinted, but it was a great card. I think it was like eight bucks, nine bucks, somewhere in there for a while. It might have been even higher. God's willing. Blood for Bones. This card, I've seen this deck in standard playing this card and every time I've played against it they've managed to turn four cast this to get the seven seven flying dragon into play and I'm like like I see them dump it into the yard on like turn two or turn three and I go okay and then on turn four they play a land and then play that and I just scoop because I'm like well I lose this is literal nothing I can do and our and our mythic cavalier of dawn there you go. Second Mythic of the Box. Vigilance. When Cavalier of Dawn enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target non-land permanent. Its controller creates 3-3 three, three colorless golem artifact token. We got a soldier token and a forest. Wow, our foil count is extremely low right now in this box. We've only got two. Only two foils. Warden of Evo's Isle. Goblin Ringleader. Renowned Weaponsmith. And Starfield Mystic. Enchantment spells you cast cost one less to cast. And we got a foil. Rugged Highlands. A foil cons land. Or what do they call them? Gain gain lands? Life lands? What do you what do you call them? I just call them cons lands because that's basically where they came came about. Brineborn Cutthroat, Colossus Hammer, Woodland Champion, and Dread Presence. This card seems like a lot of fun too. I really want to like poke around with it a little bit more. And another foil, Scholar of the Ages. Oh, there's the nice sweet Chandra uh, token. We need to pull a Chandra so that I can build a deck so that I can put these emblems onto people. Because I've got a bunch of the emblems now and I want to use them and be like, haha, take this. You get an emblem. Yeah, take a damage every upkeep. Loaming Shaman, Rapacious Dragon, Apostle of Purifying Light, and Leyline of Abundance. Uh, seeing a lot of play now, actually. Um... Because there are a lot of creatures that make mana um, in standard right now. Blight Beetle. Gauntlets of Light. Hey, our first uncommon worth over a dollar. Risen Reef. And Leyline of Combustion. 
two ley lines back back to back, and a foil Chandra's. Oh, Chandra's Ember. That's not the that's not the foil Chandra we want. I mean, it might be the foil Chandra we deserve, but it's not the one we want, right? All right, what do we got here? Empyrean Eagle, Disfigure, Might of the Masses, and Sephira, Sky's Blade. I learned my lesson with this card. If you see your opponent go turn one, uh, one drop flyer, turn two, one drop, one drop flyer, you kill one of those one drop flyers on turn three, if you can. Because if you don't, and we got a foil Howling Giant, if you don't, if you do not kill one of those flyers on turn uh, four, or turn three, I should say, their turn three, they will put a 1-1 flyer into play for one mana, and then pay a white and put her into play. Thrashing Brontodon, Meteor Golem, Moldervine Reclamation, and Golos Tireless Pilgrim. Oh, foil rare from the box, hanged executioner. We'll put the foil rare with the mythics for now. Okay, so we hit a foil rare. Are we gonna hit more than one foil rare out of this box? Let's find out. Warden of Evo's Isle, Cryptic Caves, Ember Hauler, and Knight of the Ebon Legion. A pretty interesting little vampire one drop. Vampire seems to be having a, like a resurgence on Arena as well, I noticed. Chandra, Novice Pyromancer. I'm going to put that down there. Yarok, Fenlurker. Woodland, Champion. And brought back. Oh, with another foil. Foil, Barony Vampire. All right, so our foil count is slowly climbing. They were There was like hardly any in the first row. And then the second row had like a whole bunch. Interesting. Rapacious Dragon, Fencing Ace, Scuttlemutt, and Graftigger's Cage. That's a good hit. Nice little... Oh, and another foil. Blood-soaked Altar. Okay. How many foils are we up to now? Where do we go? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine foils already? We still have a third of the box to go? My goodness. My goodness. I'm trying to blow through these boxes because I don't like making them take super long. Herald of the Sun, Yarox Wave Crasher, Manifold Key, and Soren, Imperious Bloodlord. This Soren, I've been playing it in a vampire deck. Holy moly, does it just absolutely murk Nissa? The Nissa Planeswalker, this card just absolutely nullifies what it does because they they make a three three. And then you sack like a 1-1 one, one vampire and kill their land. So now you're cutting out their mana and cutting out their creature base. It's amazing. I've been having so much fun just watching people go like turn 4 Nyssa, untap a forest, make it into a 3-3, three, three, swing you for 3, hit me in the face. My turn 3 or turn 4 is playing Soren, sacking a, sacking a vampire I had in play, killing their land, cutting them back on 2 mana, and killing a creature. Watching them go, hmm... All right, Nissa, uh, tap things, play a thing, untap a land, make a 3-3, three, three, swing you for 3, swing at Soren, block it with, you know, like one of my little crappy vampires. Next turn, play a vampire, sack it, kill the land again. Now you're now you're short on lands yet again. <laughs> it's it's been amazing. I've had I've had like three or four people playing like mono green Nissa builds just absolutely scoop to that Soren. Uh, just murdering their lands every turn. And it's a plus one. It's plus one. All you have to do is have another vampire in play to be able to plus one him to to then kill something. And you gain three life, too. Like, it's 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 a big swing. Portal of Sanctuary, Meteor Golem, Dragon Mage, and Bishop of Wings with a Demon Token and a Swift Water Cliffs. I, I am still super blown away by the fact that they made the tokens, like, the way they did. They they look amazing. Fry, Bloodthirsty Aerialist, Season of Growth, and Icon of Ancestry. With another foil, Fathom Fleet Cutthroat. That puts us up to what, like... 11 foils now? All right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. We're at 10 foils. Pulse of Marasa, Retributive Wand, Yarok's Fenlurker, and Loxodon Life Chanter. 
with an Johnny's Pride Mate and a regular old mountain. So we still haven't seen a single copy of Veil of Summer. Is that correct? I want to say yes. Uh, Lightning Stormkin. Thought Distortion. Corpse Knight with the appropriate 2-2. Two -two. And our rare is a Temple of Epiphany. Oh, second foil rare from the box. Knight of the Ebon Legion. So there you go. We hit two foil rares out of this box. It's so crazy. The number of foil rares we've opened so far, right? Because we've opened two from this box, one from the last box, and three from the first. So we've now got the what the average would be for an entire case already, and we still have three boxes to open. Gravedigger, Ogre Shield Breaker, Ancestral Blade, and Leyline of Anticipation. All right, we're only missing the, the highest priced Leyline now. <laughs> Where's that Leyline of the Void? Dang it. It's going to go up in price because everyone was playing it this weekend. Pattern Matcher, Chandra's Spitfire, Spectral Sailor, and Elvish Reclaimer. All right, what do we think? What do we think? We'll end up with like 12, 13 foils again. Is that what we're thinking? 13-ish? Does that sound about right? Because we're at, what, 10? We're at 11 now, right? Because we just opened that night. Yeah, so let's say 12 or 13. Oh, Chandra, Acolyte of Flame. You're, you're good, but you're not the Chandra I'm looking for. I'm looking for that mythic Chandra. I want that mythic Chandra. Alright. Fry. Loyal Pegasus. Vengeful Warchief. And... Ha! Yes! Yes! <laughs> there she is. I, I am super happy about that. Man, back-to-back -back Chandra's. Rare one and then mythic. Yes, please. Now I can finally build that Chandra deck and put those emblems to good use. I want to put those emblems to good use. I want to take my friends out and be like, here, have this beautiful emblem. And they go, but I don't want that. And I'm like, too bad. You enjoy that. You enjoy it. Hardcover, Vengeful Warchief, Scampering Scorcher, and Temple of Maladi. And another foil. Holy moly. Okay. So what do you think the chances are? Two packs left. We've got one, two, three, four. We've got four of the five lands. We have four of the five ley lines. What do you think the chances of hitting all the lands and all the ley lines in one box is? This is the question I pose to you. Every ley line, every land. That's ten rares. Lightning Stormkin. Devout Decree. Sky Knight. Van, uh, Vanguard, and Legion's End. Well, we, we missed it. We missed it. We got a Swamp and a Demon Token. Last pack. Pulse of Marasa. Aether Gust. Salvage, Salvager of Ruin. And Mystic Forge. We missed a foil, though. Missed the foil. So what do we get? How many foils do we get? Let's just check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We hit 12 foils. We didn't hit a single copy of Veil of Summer. Is this what I'm seeing? Is that a thing? Is Veil of Summer not in this set? <laughs> it's definitely in this set, but like, is it just not like... Um... Is it in one of, like, the Planeswalker decks or something? It can't be. It must be actually in the set, because I'm pretty sure I've seen it many times. Anyway, we only hit... Um, oh, this is in the wrong pile. We only hit four Mythics, which is kind of low, I think. I mean, I think that's the lowest number of Mythics we've hit from a box so far out of this set. We hit 12 foils, which is about average, but we hit two rare foils, which is like sort of like that seems like middle of the road because we hit one with three, one with two and one with one. So we're kind of like we're three boxes in and our average is about two per box ish, right? Yeah, two per box because, yeah, six out of three. So two per box. Um, that being said, with the foil count being up, the number of foil rares obviously goes up as well. Um, 
But the fact that we've hit the number of foil rares that you were getting out of a case before, because you were normally getting one foil rare per box out of a case before, and we're at six now, and we've only opened half of our case, it seems pretty crazy. Um, I would expect that means that if that's the case going forward, foil rares will not have nearly as much value in the secondary market as they used to. Um, so keep that in mind for new sets and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, because they'll be more common. That's just it, right? Not a bad little box. I'm super stoked about the Chandra for sure. Um, I'm I'm really happy about it. I'm, you know... It's kind of weird that we didn't get a single copy of, of one of the Mythics. Or one of the uh, Uncommons, I should say. Mythics. But we did hit the top two Mythics. We hit Chandra and Soren. Both of those being the top two Mythics from the set. Um, then we hit... Who, who else did we hit? We hit... Ooh. Ooh. All right. We hit <laughs> Kethis which is the third lowest, and Cavalier of Dawn, which is the lowest. So we hit the lowest, we hit two of the three lowest mythics and the top two mythics, which is kind of funny. So I guess it like balances out to like the middle somewhere. But that's pretty funny. And then for rares, we, we hit some pretty good stuff, but we missed the Ley Line of the Void. Um, that is... Uh, we didn't hit Lotus Field. We hit the Chandra. We hit the Ley Line of Sanctity. We hit... Uh, anticipation we hit scheming cemetery we hit R rotting registrar we hit knight of ebon oh knight of ebon oh it's only wow the value of this set is actually quite low didn't realize the ev of this set is quite low let's put it that way uh, let's see rares what is that guy what's what's his name that black vampire Knight of the Ebon Legion. So five bucks for that foil rare. Not too shabby. What was our other foil rare? Hanged Executioner. Probably also not super exciting uh, in the foil rare situation for dollar value. But that's okay. Still a sweet card. And it's a spirit. So, hey, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I know I've been rambling here at the end of this video. I apologize. But this is what I do. It's what I do. So, sorry, not sorry, I guess, is what I mean to say. Canadian sorry. It's just the sorry you get when anything happens. It doesn't actually mean sorry, really. Or I, I should say, it always means sorry, but it's not like the same meaningful sorry where it's like, oh, sorry, you know. Sorry. Dory? Sorry? Sorry. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And as always, may your pulls ever be better.